brought in uh, generating or cultivation motivation is a very important we must think this morning I'm here in TBC to study Dharma to know how to achieve Buddhahood. This is the highest object, you know, objective achievement we're going to achieve. Second, also thing I'm going to study Dharma or controlling my own the negative thoughts, the negative minds. Third, we must think I'm going, I'm going to study Dharma to have a inner happiness, inner peace. Fourth, we must think I'm going to study Dharma to overcome my daily problems and difficulties. We must have a four achievements through study Dharma. Now reverse way, as a human being, as a living being, we every day or every moment we need to in challenge, we need to overcome from our daily difficulties and problems. It's same for all living beings, not only human beings. For example, when you drop us, you know, like a honey on your kitchen, drop of honey on your kitchen on the table, on the table, then you can see within you know a few minutes the ants come around because they also need to overcome, need to challenging, need to you know uh, satisfy their daily life. The same thing without overcome our daily problems then there's no actually happiness. Yes, we thought overcome daily problem. There's no external happiness, <clears throat> neither inner happiness. Second, is same thing. Human being, you know, non-other beings, we can say non-human beings, which is beings, they're also looking happiness the external, you know, peaceful environment, the inner happiness. The same thing for all living beings. Without having inner happiness, without having the, you know, the our external happiness or peaceful, we cannot control the anger attachment Without controlling anger, attachment, hatred, ego, jealousy, we cannot achieve Buddhahood. So we think I'm going to study Dharma to achieve this, you know, like the five types of achievement. All of them has, you know, uh, connect, uh, connection to each other. With uh, this motivation, we need to, in order to achieve this, you know, four achievements or five achievements, we need to rely on, you know, excellent teacher, excellent guru. Here, the guru teacher refer to all the Buddhas. All Buddhas are teacher 
who can teach us how to achieve happiness, how to overcome our anger, attachment, hatred. All the Buddhas are must think they are teacher, they are teach, they can teach us how to have a inner happiness, how to overcome our daily problems. Then the teaching, not the, uh, the, the words, the meaning of the teachings, the realization of the teachings are the Dharma. Then the practitioner who really realize emptiness, who accomplish the Arya path, Bodhicitta, those are Sangha. Sangha not only refer to the you know, full order monks and nuns. Therefore, as a Buddhist, why we need to take refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha? In the same way, in order to free from the sickness or disease, we need excellent doctor. All the Buddhas are like a doctor. In order to free from the sickness, we need a right prescription. Therefore, the all the the wooden, you know, uh, the words of the Buddha teachings, the words of the what other masters teachings are prescription. Through the prescription, we need, you know, the right medicine. Therefore, the realization, realizing emptiness, realizing impermanence, generating compassion, those are medicine. Therefore, in order to free from the sickness, we need three things, doctor, prescription, the, with the medicine, then the nurse. Therefore, all the sanghas, you know, the full audience or, you know, normal person who achieve realization, those are like a nurse. Therefore, take refuge, <clears throat> page number, First number four. Remember the three excellence and take refuge. I go for refuge and number 10 through the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By my accumulations of practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and number 10 through the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And the accumulations of practice of giving and so forth may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and enlightenment, Buddha, Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By my accumulations of practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Please take refuge to the Divajan, followed by the verses. Next, Bodhicitta. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I generate the mind of awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I generate the mind of awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I generate the amount of awakening for the benefit of all who say Jen being. I as I usually I mentioned many times as a Buddhist, every moment when you feel you no know, fear, you no know, like scare. First, you need to remember the Dharma. Apply the Dharma, which is 
you study for many years. So when you reflect, when you remember the Dharma, not just remember, applying the Dharma, any kinds of sense of fear, sense of scare, sense of insecure things going to disappear. Particularly when we cultivate bodhicitta. In bodhicitta, we say, I wish to be you known, I, uh, I generate the manaful agony for benefit all sentient beings. When you remember, I'm you know, practicing dharma to benefit all sentient beings, then there's no such as fear we can have in our daily life. Particularly when you remember the Dharma of the first, remember the four noble truths. This kind of revision for you. The first, what does it mean? Truth. That four, four is the number four. Noble is the being who go beyond the ordinary uh, life. The truth means whether there's a Buddha or not whether they are Buddhist or not, whether they are human being or not, the truth is always be truth. Like suffering, any kinds of suffering, physical suffering, mental suffering, or the environment suffering, any kinds of suffering, the origin is ignorance. This also, Truth is truth for everybody, whether you are Buddhist or non-Buddhist. Then in order to have a happy and healthy life, we need to, you know, reduce the sufferings. We need to eliminate the suffering. The suffering can be eliminated if we eliminate the cause of sufferings, right? The like ignorance, anger, hatred, jealousy, ego, all these the negative thoughts, we name them negative thoughts, because these thoughts, these minds bring a lot of sufferings. This also, whether you are Buddhist or non-Buddhist, whether you believe in Buddha or not, is a truth. But uh, this day you can see within your family, within your neighbors, within the in two countries, the problems, uh, you know, fighting, the uh, wars is mainly caused by ignorance, jealousy, attachment, and is true. Uh, then as a Buddhist, what, what we believe. So if we put enough effort, if we very you know, serious about practicing dharma, mean applying the antidotes, right? applying the antidotes, when you apply compassion in your daily life, for 24 hours, you cultivate compassion, kindness. There's no you know, kind of chance anger can arise, right? Anger can be aroused maybe short time. When you apply compassion, anger can be under control. It's true. Not just controlling anger, attachment, the negative thoughts. We believe through you know applying the Dharma. For example, apply compassion, anger can be eliminated. Applying you know, like great compassion, kindness, anger can be eliminated from the root. Applying the wisdom, which is realizing emptiness, first that we can control the ignorance and gradually we can, you know, get rid of the ignorance. When the ignorance no more there, then anger, attachment, all had already has gone, like a cut the, through the tree. We no need to 
cut the branch separately. It's also truth, a truth. Now within the four noble truths, then detail, you know, more detailed explanation is a twirling interdependence. Origin of suffering is ignorance. Therefore, what we call ignorant arise. Second, what's the second one? Formation or karmas. Positive negative karma. The formation arise. Consciousness. Consciousness. The consciousness arise. Name and form. Right. Go all the way. Then birth. Then birth, the birth arise, aging and death. Right? So this means you can see ignorance is the cause. Ignorance produces all the, at the end, all the sufferings we have because of ignorance. Right? This means recognizing that ignorance means more detailed explanation about the cause of suffering, how suffering arises. And then, when we go reverse, uh, reverse, all the sufferings, whether you are Buddhist or non-Buddhist, no matter, you are human being or you are, you know, like a, like simple animals, everybody has a suffering, right? You can see. All the sufferings are going to arise from where? Then, birth, aging and death, everything, birth. Then go all the way to ignorance. That means you are meditating, you know, between the origin of suffering and suffering. How, you know, ignorance arise, how all the sufferings arise from. The second, remember, ignorance ceases, then formation ceases. Then the birth ceases, then aging and death ceases. Imagine one day you have a life, there's no aging, no death. You'll be very happy, right? We don't need all the medicines. We don't need all the supplementaries. We know even though we don't need all the, you know, the uh, makeup things. Also, for me, I don't need to shave the hair every day. <laughs> very happy, right? <laughs> aging, death, all of them can be ceased if we have to cease. Ignorance. That means it's a reflection on the, you know, uh, the path to cessation. How we can cease ignorance through prayer? Only prayer, chanting, must say cannot, cannot. It's true. But therefore, as a Buddhist, in a way, we can say, you know, we are very lucky. Every day we do a lot of practicing for accumulating merit. Accumulating merit doesn't you know, have the kind of um, power to cut or cease the ignorance. So the ignorance can be ceased when we realize emptiness. You can say ignorance can be ceased, you know, can be stopped when we practice the, you know, air for area path. What is the number one? The first number one? Right view. Right view. Right. Right view sometimes, you know, yes, it referred to the emptiness. Shunada. Shunada means of the zero degree. Zero degree. Exactly. When you analyze, you know, any phenomena, including Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, when you analyze, when you investigate about the each of the phenomena, finally you will reach to the zero point. There's a nothing. Like a human, right? let's say you'll be, you have a name, let me name is Yuan Ten. When you analyze who, where is the Yuan Ten, who is the Yuan Ten, finally you're going to reach to the zero point. Yes, so you cannot find this, you can say, oh, this is the Yuan Ten. Therefore, the right view is very important. Not, you know, the right view refer to the emptiness, the right view. For example, sometimes you're angry with your neighbors. 
right? So then you, you thought, why I'm angry with my neighbors? And finally you realize I'm angry with them because I have a wrong view. I have a wrong view about the family. For example, very simple thing, for example, it's very common. You have a neighbors. Every morning your neighbor say, when you see, hey, good morning, so somehow, right? You say also good morning, you feel happy. Next day, your neighbor has a big party with the, you know, the husband, wife, or children of the big party in the house. Next morning, when she get out, or he get out from the house, he or she not going to say good morning. She just go like this, right? What do you think that? How come she's very angry with me today? Right? We think, oh, he, he or she is very angry with me. I don't think they like me. Then you also get angry, upset. It's come because of the wrong view, right? Therefore, realizing emptiness is very important. But as a support, you know, in daily life, we must have a right view, not the wrong view about anything. The second is what the second one? Huh? Right? Intention or thoughts? Thoughts. Okay. Okay. The words are different, right? Uh, right. Thoughts. Right. Intention. It's also very important. You are Buddhist or non-Buddhist, right? It's very, very important to have a right intention, the right thoughts. Right thoughts. When you have a right thoughts, you will have a right actions. When you have a wrong thoughts, bad thoughts, bad intention, you never could have a right action. Right? Now you can see the right and wrong action is very big difference. When you act in the right way, right action is benefit for you, also benefit for others. For example, when you have a right, you know, kind of a speech, you say in a very nice way, good morning, where are you going, how are you? It, it's come with the right intention. This day you can see, you know, when you see the boss, you say, hey, good morning. You just verbally saying, good morning, right? From your heart, you're not saying good morning. It's a way of culture. Good morning, have a good day. But you cannot feel happy <clears throat> because the, the action is, isn't the right action because it doesn't have a right intention, right? There's a big difference, for example, when you see your friends, you know, a friend is uh, sick or he or she's not so happy. You just go to see her, you know, him, just say, hey, hello, how are you feel from your heart? Your friend can feel happiness. So that, that view. Therefore, what I'm seeing here, when we have the right view, then Ignorance can be ceased. Ignorance ceases, then you know, formation or karma will to cease. At the end, you know, uh, birth will to be ceased. Then there's no aging, no death. Then we can see you know, uh, uh, meditation on the path. Then at the end, no aging, no death, no negative negative thoughts mean a cessation. Uh, so again, how I can realize, how I can, you know, going to know, how I, I going to know the right view. So we need to know the definition, the meaning of dependent origination. Dependent origination. Dependent, right? So, do you remember the first three words? For the first three words, they ask what, what is the dependent origination, right? What is the Dharma? What is the Buddha? Dependent something, remember something exists because something else already exists. First is also meaning of the in you know, part of the meaning of dependent origination. 
What is the second one? Something born because something has already born. Third one, like, like a ignorance, arise, ovation. Okay. Look at something exists, many something is happening. A flower is growing, tree is growing, also you know, it's raining, something's going on because the cause of them is already there. Yeah, right. Therefore, when you really understood something exists, something is happening, is something there because something already there, the cause are there. Right? Then, second, what we need to know, what, what, how we can apply the, 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 the first the meaning of dependent origination. Oh, I'm not happy this morning. When you are, you are not happy, then you will live with the unhappiness mind for whole day. Right? When you feel, oh, this morning I'm not happy, then you ask something happening now because something already happened. Or maybe I've had an you know, argument with someone or you have a lot of, you know, kind of negative thing happen, then you feel unhappiness. Therefore, first, cause and effect. There's an effect because there's a cause. If there's a cause, surely there will be an effect. The effect can be good or bad. The effect can be very complete or incomplete. It depends on the cause. Also, right? The second, something born mean the result, the F, you know, the effort is permanent or impermanent. It is impermanent because the cause of it is a impermanent. Cause impermanent, therefore the result is a impermanent. The result is impermanent because the cause is impermanent. That cause permanent. So when you reflect, when you fully understood, cause impermanent, effect impermanent. Effect is impermanent because the cause impermanent means permanent cause cannot produce anything. Okay, permanent cause. There's no such a permanent cause. If there's a permanent cause, a permanent cause cannot produce anything. As you remember, you know, cause of the impermanent. So when you fully understood, you know, the cause and effect is impermanent, then for you very easy to, you know, control your emotions, your emotions. For example, you lost your dearest, your dearest, like, you know, person, your relatives or some, you lost your dearest one. How do you feel? You feel upset, right? You feel upset, you feel very sad. Because you never think, you think something, not all the time you remember, my dearest, you know, this person is permanent. He or she going to live anytime. When you really realize at the beginning, yes, my dearest, you know, friend or father or mother is impermanent. When he, you know, person is in, in, uh, going to live already left, you don't have the emotional problems. You are able to accept. We cannot accept this thing happening because we never think things are impermanent. Right? This one, the uh, second part. Third is your cause produce effect, effort, uh, result. The result must arise from the cause. But one cause cannot produce everything. Particular cause produce particular effort, right? Particular, very particular cause, you know, like that arise, very particular result. Very particular result also arise from very particular cause, right? That means when you see, usually commonly when people say, oh, 
I'm not happy. I have a problem. There's not just one problem. There's so many problems. Right? Different problems come from different causes. Therefore, when you feel I need to, you know, I need more inner happiness. I need more inner peace. You need to know why I am not peace. Why I am I cannot have a peace in my mind. Now you need to reflect very particular cause, particular, you know, like a condition. When you realize, oh, this is the cause, or this is the very particular cause, which therefore I don't have an inner happiness. I'm not happy. Then what you need to do? You need to control. You need to eliminate a very particular cause, and you can achieve happiness. Right? So now we are going to study about the airport or a path. Then uh, next we're going to study about the more explanation about dependent originations. Sutras, okay, okay. Okay, this all you remember, must remember. Uh, who says dependent arising? No. Remember, who says dependent arising? Sees the Dharma. Who sees Dharma? See the Buddha. That for okay, what is the Dharma? Please read. The Dharma is at for part of the noble ones. Right view, right thoughts, right speech, right end of action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentrations. But sometimes people mix up the mindfulness and concentration the right concentration, meditation. Okay, when we have the right view, when we, view is, uh, you know, kind of, it's you not know, a feeling, but view, view is the thing we need to, uh, we need to realize. For example, impermanent. Verbally, we able to say impermanent, right, or say. Grossly, we realize impermanent. Also, subtle, you know, little be subtle also, we can understand impermanent. But the subtlest impermanent, not, not, you know, not easy to understand. But when you do meditation, first, you know, meditation on impermanence, uh, concentration on impermanence, first, you need to meditate on the, the gross level of impermanence. Right? Like you, you are like when you are born, you are very little, like a baby, then two years, 10 years, 20 years, you can see the changing. Changing, you can changing. It's a gross. You really realize gross impermanence is quite good. Then based on the Realizing gross impermanent, then you can do more subtle one, you know, changing every day for 24 hours, right? When you woke up 4.30, you look at the sky, the very dark. You could look at around the, like your house, a lot of lights. Then after a few hours, the darkness has gone. All the light off. Then you can see the you know the busy life life start. It's a one day changing. Like eating food, right? When you eat breakfast, 20 minutes you say, I'm very full, right? I'm very full. Let me your stomach is full. After one hour, what you say, I feel hungry. It's been changing. You, you know, you meditate on, you know, impermanent or changing for 24 hours. Then within the 24 hour, you just meditate on you know changing within one hour. Within one hour. Within one hour, you can see everything changing. Just I'm looking outside in the road, I can see so many changing. 
even car is moving at some one car stop, one car has gone. Things are changing. People are moving. Just meditate on changing within one hour. The easiest one you can, you know, meditate on changing your mind. Right? Our mind changing very, very quickly. First, when you go to the restaurant, food court, you want to eat what? Like, let's say, chicken rice. You want to eat. Second, no, no, no. I don't want to eat chicken. I want to eat, you know, like a noodle. And you, 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 you just go to pay. So, no, 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 no. I want to take something. Right? Therefore, meditate on changing our mind every moment. Every moment. Then based on this understanding, changing every moment, then what you need to think is all condition phenomena. Expensive or cheap, big or small, huge or very huge, actually is changing. Like, you know, Himalaya, Mount Everest, a very huge mountain. When you look at for 24 hours, you cannot see the mountain is, you know, changing in the reality. The mountain is very huge, very solid, but it's changing. Not just changing within, you know, 24 hours, it's changing momentarily, momentarily, momentarily. Right? Therefore, uh, how we should uh, meditate on impermanence, how we should meditate on the uh, emptiness. So before we meditate on something, we need to realize the thing which is we are going to meditate on, right? Let's say meditate on impermanence. You just you simple. You just close your eyes. You just be quiet. Is not the meditation. Realize impermanence. Then your mind continuously focus on impermanence. Then we go, you know, concentration or meditation. Uh, Was a uh, right concentration, right? Yeah. yeah, right concentration. Then what does mean mindfulness? Mindfulness. Mindfulness is like a you know, very sensitive, like a sensor, very sen like a sensitive sensor, right? You can see. Uh, uh, some office is very, very important, then they put very sensitive sensor. Something happened, the sensor can sense, right? The sensor or technology can detect, detect immediately. Therefore, the mindfulness is like a very powerful detective, very powerful in the sensor, very, very powerful technology. So your mind meditate or focus on impermanence. When your mind is, you know, like a uh, goes a little away, goes away for one moment, the mindfulness need to realize. Understand? The mind is just focused on the impermanence. Means the mind is meditating. The mind is concentrating on the impermanence. First, yes, your mind is on the impermanent. Second moment, your mind has gone. But for us, we going to usually we realize after maybe three, four, five minutes later, we can realize, oh, my mind is wandering somewhere. Because we don't have a good mindfulness. Mindfulness is, I told you, very powerful in a kind of uh, sensor. When the man just, you know, go away from the chosen object, the man will need to realize. When the man, the, the, the mind, you know, little bit, little bit, little bit relax, because laxity, a bit loose, also the man will need, man will need to realize. So in order to have a, you know, good meditation, we need good mindfulness. Mindfulness, right? Mindfulness. Therefore, you should not think, you know, concentration, 
mindfulness is a same meaning. No. Tibetan we call temba, or shejing. There's a true temba and shejing. Right? Uh, mindfulness and right concentration. Now you can see the order, right? When we have a right view, then we have a right thoughts. When we have a right thoughts, then we have a right action, right action or a right speech. A right speech, you know, like body action, mental action, verbal action, right speech. This is a, if for example, you know, the, the body and mind, you know, speech, action. Then, right action. Then, right livelihood. Right. Yanda, the right livelihood in the past, thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, four, five thousand years ago, is quite, you know, easy to have a, a right livelihood. I can see it's a huge difference where I was, you know, grow up in Zanskar, when I was grow up in South India, right now where I'm living here, I can see it's a huge difference. Few thousand years ago, even though 100 years, like a 100 years ago, for me, let's say uh, 40 years ago, when I was in Zanskar, very simple. Life is very simple, very honest. You have your own field, then you cannot, you know, uh, uh, get water every day. There are rules. Oh, Sunday, the water, you know, irrigation water, go those families. You know, go to fire. The next day, the water will go other family. There's no fighting, no argument, no deceiving. Just then they go their own vegetable, you know, own like a uh, uh, what called wheat and barley. Then you have your, your own minimal animals. It's a very simple, very easy to have a right livelihood. This day, not easy at all to have a right livelihood. You want to be honest, right? If you want to be honest, you want to be honest? Yes, sure. Everybody wants to be very happy to be honest. Can you be honest on the time? Can? Cannot, cannot. Not easy, right? When you go in the, let's say, business field, no matter the business is small or big or whatever, you, when you go business, when you go, go work in the office, if you are very honest, you really fully work for the company, you fully focus your work, but you are, what do you call that? People who next to you, what do you call? Kali won't be happy. Why? You're doing so hard. Be relaxed. You know, he or she wants to worry. They have to work as the not easy at all. If you better honest, you know, transparent, other are not happy. Somehow it's good to have a right livelihood. For example, simple example I give you here. Let's say, you know, I have a job, job for cleaning like food court. In the morning, I just go with the broom, right? Or clean the you know, table, clean the table, clean. Maybe monthly I can get like a thousand dollar. When I receive thousand dollar, when I buy things, when I eat food, I feel very happy. Yes, I do other job. I cheat other, even though this day we have what we call the people go around with the product. What do you call? Promoting product. What do you call? Sell person. If you are a sell person, can you be honest? Right? You know the production is a problem. You know the battery, the mobile, or the laptop, or TV, or whatever. You know there's a problem. You cannot tell, right? No choice. You cannot, if you tell, nobody will buy it. You cannot get any percentage or commission. Now how we can have a, then somehow, you know, the salesman go around, 
they talk mostly and uh, talk about all the products that the many people buy. It. Then at the end, he put the person will vote up in our commission. When the person eating food, you know, using the money, in the deep down, the person feel guilt feeling, right? Therefore, not easy to have a lot of somehow, you know, we try to have a the right livelihood. Then next one, what's the next after the right livelihood? Mm -hmm. Third effort. Oh yeah. Third effort is what you're talking about here. Normally, in order to survive, we have to do a lot of effort for defending the field. But here we're talking about practicing dharma. Right? Dharma, let's say you want to build it on impermanence. You want to cultivate uh, bodhicitta. The effort you must put in the right way. If you put a lot of effort, the next day you feel you don't want to do meditation. But if you put little effort, you cannot feel the uh, you know, transformation in your mind. Therefore, the right effort. Not just right effort, you know, put effort on the the right things, right things, right, right effort. Is what we're talking about. We're talking about the middle way. Not too much, not little, the right effort. So this eight fall or a path is the dharma to cease ignorance. Clear? The eight fall or a path is the path for antidote to cease the ignorance, particularly the right view is the you know, antidote to eliminate the ignorance. Then how we can have a right view, I told you, when we realize dependent origination. Remember, don't mix up dependent origination and interdependent. Interdependency is not the same meaning. The next, you can see here, who is the Bhagavan? So Dharma, then, you know, Bhagavan Buddha. A Buddha, so-called because of the comprehending all dharmas, then comprehending, understand the reality of all phenomena, all dharmas. And don't be the wisdom, eyes of the noble one, and the body of the dharma, those perceive the dharma for those still in the training and those beyond training. That means what's in Buddha? He himself, right, the Buddha, him or herself, fully understood the Dharma, understood the reality of all phenomena. Not just he or she, you know, realized the Dharma, he has the wisdom eyes. When you see the reality, when you really know the truth, then you have the wisdom eyes. Not, you know, having or possess the wisdom eyes, then the being, the Buddha, those receive the Dharma of those still training, right? like, who, like us. And also, he is a teacher who can teach the dharma who go beyond the ordinary life. This is the Buddha. For us, when we remember Buddha, we everybody has the same thoughts. When you say, when you think about Buddha, we think Buddha is a very powerful, right? Very powerful. He can do anything. For us, when you think about Buddha, for us, like Buddha is like a creator. Buddha is like a god. No. Buddha is always think Buddha is the excellent teacher. Teach for ordinary person. Also, he can teach the person who go beyond the ordinary life. Right? Therefore, what is the meaning? What is the purpose, you know, uh, to be Buddha? Everybody say, you know, I wish to be Buddha. So what is your purpose to be Buddha? Why you want to be Buddha? Huh? Yeah, benefit others. So this is our purpose. 
how we can benefit others through teaching the Dharma. Teaching Dharma. Now you can see what is the you know, responsibility as a Buddha to benefit, how can benefit, teach. What does mean teaching mean? Teach how to eliminate the negative thoughts, how to cultivate the positive thoughts. Right? This means practicing Dharma is very simple. You know, control, reduce the negative thoughts, cultivate, generate the positive thoughts. The positive thoughts more you know, generate, then the negative thoughts more we will reduce. For example, when you cultivate compassion towards one particular you know, your enemy, you can feel the hate and anger you know, decrease. Decrease, decrease. If you generate anger you know, continues to throw someone, you can see the compassion towards the person is decrease. It's practical, right? Therefore, Dharma means very simple. Cultivate or generate the positive thoughts, reduce or minimize, eliminate the negative thoughts through the right view. Now it's more detailed explanation. How does one see dependent arising? Now, more details is about the dependent arising. On this point, the Bhagavan said, on who says dependent arising as constant without life force, divorce of life force, true, unmistaking, unborn, not arising, uncreated, uncompounded, unobstructed, impressible, tangled, fearless, unshaked, that shinked, unmoved. These are the general definition of dependent origination. For you, very difficult to understand what does mean, you know, the word of the life force, unmistaking. So we just move the next sentence here. Why it is called dependent arising? It is called dependent arising because it is causal and the conditional, not non-causal and non-conditional. Why we call dependent arising? It is called, please read, dependent arising because it is causal and conditional. Not, not causal and conditional. But therefore, the Buddhahood, the ultimate happiness is a causal and conditional, not the non causal and non-conditional. In this connection, the Bhagavan consciously taught the characteristic of the dependent arising as follows. Now you can see why you know things are uh, causal and conditional. Taught the characteristic of the dependent arising as follows. Results, please read, come from their own specific condition. Remember this sentence. Please read again. Result come from their own specific conditions. Whether tathagata appear or not, this true nature of things will remain. Please read one more. Result their own specific conditions, whether the appear or not, the true nature of him will remain. It is the truth nature. Then the constancies of Dharma. Hmm? of Dharma coincides with the dependent arising, such as this, unmistaking, such as this, unchanging, such as this, actuality, truth, unmistaking in. And therefore, within this sentence, this I feel very easy for you. Result come from their own specific condition, whether Tathagata appeared or not, the truth nature of 
things will remind. At the beginning, I told you that the four noble truth, the origin of suffering, suffering, cessation, the part of the cessation, the four noble truth is just discovered by Buddha. It's not that, you know, what you call invent, invent, invented by Buddha. It's there. Right? Therefore, according to Buddhism, condition phenomena are impermanent. Buddha appear or not, Buddha, you know, come on the planet or not, but things always be impermanent. Buddha, you know, appear or not, the emptiness is always there. But we have to realize, we cannot realize just out by ourselves. We need a teacher who has an experience, who really already realize. Therefore, why we need to develop Buddha? Because we need to learn, we need to discover things we, before we never heard, before we never heard it. Therefore, we need to learn Buddha. Because Buddha is not just, you know, like being, you know, automatically he realized emptiness. No, he himself or herself go through a lot of study, practice at the end, you know, he or she realized that emptiness. Also, emptiness is always there. But we need to realize, whether I feel or not, ignorance always arises in our formation. Formation always arises consciousness. But we need to learn, we need to understand. Moreover, dependent arising emerges from the true principle. From the, what true principle is it? From a causal relation and condition relation. Furthermore, it should be seen as a true form, outer and inner. Right? Moreover, dependent arising emerges from the true principle. That means things arise depend on the true principle. What are they? Causal relation and the condition relation. I told you, you know, uh, before, all the condition phenomena must arise from the true two things. What are they? Cause and condition. Condition and cause. Without cause, nothing can happen. We need cause. Only cause cannot have anything. We need condition. Like a golden, like a, you know, like a, what do you call, golden ring. Golden ring, right? The gold, piece of gold is the cause. Gold is the cause. Then, you know, the goldsmith is the condition. You mm -hmm. know, the tools, you know, all everything is a condition. Likewise, ignorance, right? anger, let's say anger, anger arises from cause and condition. The, the previous continuum of the anger is the condition, so cause. The previous continuum of the anger is the cause of the anger. Then suddenly, you know, things happen that we get angry. Those are the condition. That anger is already within us. Let's say when we, when we have a deep sleeping, we sleep very deeply, nobody can see we are angry. The, the anger is there. Right? Then you, you have, you are really, you know, uh, sleeping very happily, very peacefully. Then someone wake you up, wake you up. Hey, wake up, wake up. Do you feel happy? <laughs> angry, angry, right? So, those person is the condition, not the, not the cause. Cause is their own previous anger is the cause, right? Cause condition. Therefore, we not just read the word, right? We really need to understand, we really, we really need to believe. We must have a strong faith. Things become through the two things, cause and condition, right? Therefore, when you really believe in the things happen due to the two things, cause and condition, for you, very easy to kindle your anger, very easy to kindle your attachment, very easy to control your, like, you know, let's say, sadness and suffering. 
But most time when we thought, we thought anger is mainly come to arise from one cause, by one cause. Therefore, when we have a fighting, we get angry. But then since we think, oh, this person is my enemy, because we, we, are, we are pointing only one cause. We are not pointing in a condition. Or we are pointing only condition, not the cause. Or we pointing only cause, not the condition. Right? Condition. But you know, it's, it's happened with, with the two things. Very easy to handle any kinds of negative thoughts. For me, in my experience, when, for example, it's very common. Uh, I think all of you have an experience, right? Many tourists, or even though many single tourists, they lost somewhere in the, you know, like shopping mall or MRT, they lost, right? They know, I know, they really lost. They really don't know where to go, how to reach there. Then I just simply just go closer, excuse me, you know, like, where you want to go? Are you lost? Yes, no, 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 I'm not. Right. They just get angry. When they get angry, I also get angry. <laughs> that, that time, why I get angry? Because I pointing only one cause. Oh, this is a bad reaction. But I never thought is is ang I angry because I already have you know angry there. Next next moment you think, yeah, I'm getting angry because my angry is already there. The person is the condition. And cause and condition, both is very important. If you compare these two, which is more important? Cause and condition. Cause. In order to make a gold ring, at least you need a piece of gold. Gold. Therefore, when you are finding argument, you get angry. Yes, other people, you know, people, environment are just condition. Actually, the most important cause you have, what do you have? Therefore, cause and condition, right? Remember, cause and condition. The next, it should be seen as a true form. What are they? Outer and inner. Or really inner. Therefore, Buddha, yes, of course, he's a Buddha. He's a very kind of, you know, uh, what you can, we can call he or she's what English name is not kind, very kind, very wise, very wise. That if Buddha taught us directly the inner in the dependent origination, we not going to understand. Therefore, he told here that the outer dependent origination. What is the causal relation in outer dependent arising? Look at it is of uh, flowers, it follows from our seeds, please read. All our seeds come as a sprout, that seeds sprout. Second, sprout as a leaf, from a leaf as a stem, from stem as a pedicle, from the pedicle, pestle, from the pestle, a flower, and the flower comes as a fruit. Be easy to understand, right? Let's see. There's a seed, a sprout, then the leaf, then there's a stem, there's a pedicle, then there's a flowers, then there's a fruits. Fruit, that, that's the order, fruits. And so on. Until the family, we thought the flower now reverse. We thought flowers, the fruit cannot arise, right? In order to arise fruit, there must be flower. Now go divorce. We thought the uh, flower, flower, fruit cannot arise. Next one, we thought the pistol, uh, pistol, flower cannot arise. We thought the medical, right? Medical crystal cannot arise. We thought the leaf crystal cannot arise. We thought the sprout 
live cannot arise. Without the seeds, sprout cannot arise. Right? This is the external how the external phenomena arise. And then next sentence. Finally, there's a flower, then there's a fruit will form. In that process, okay, this that process means seeds arise, sprouts, sprouts, leaf, all the fruits. And this process, the seeds does not think I form a sprout, nor does the sprout thing I'm performed by the seeds, right? Sit doesn't have the thoughts to say, I'm going to arise, perform a sprout. Don't have. Then the sprout, you know, sprout never think, I'm performed by the sit. Then how is happening? How is happening? Because of the causes and the condition. Causes and condition. Causes and condition. I'm performed by the sit. Likewise, the flower does not think I form the fruits, nor the, does the fruit think I am formed by the flower. Yet, if there is a seed, the sprout will take form and arise and so on, until finally, like was, if there is a flower, the fruit will take form and arise. This is the causal relationship in the outer dependent arising. But now here is thing happening, right? Seeds, sprout, leaf, vegetal, then flower, fruit hum. But they don't have any kind of intention. Seed doesn't have intention to say I'm going to form a sprout. The sprout doesn't have a thought I form by the seeds. But it's, it's happening. It's happening because cause and condition. Therefore, according to Buddhist tradition, there's no concept. We cannot accept things happen, you know, accidentally. Nothing can be happen accidentally. We cannot say things happen, you know, kind of automatically. There's a, no such a thing, thing happen automatically. It's happened due to the causes and condition. Clear as condition. Therefore, what, what we have to learn this, this sentence, what we would learn, like last yesterday and today, the weather is going to be very hot. Hot, right? When you walk around, what we do, we say, ah, oh, the weather is so hot. We angry with the weather, right? Weather, the, the weather doesn't have a thought, or oh, today I'm going to have a you know, hot weather. The environment doesn't have a thought, I'm going to have hot weather. The environment does have a thoughts, tomorrow I'm going to have a you know the cool weather. It's happening due to the causes and condition. Can we change this condition? Yeah, no. Then what we can change? We can change our mind. We can change our thoughts. When the weather is so hot, you try to use umbrella, you just drink water, you try to walk, you know, uh, under the shadow, should not complain. Likewise, when we are getting older, right? when you're getting older, you're very older, old, also we feel upset. We're getting older because of the cause and condition. So we should not come in getting older, we should not come in having sickness, but we need to learn how to overcome this problem, like weather problem, you know, like financial problem. There are so many problems, but basically what we need to do, we can handle our mind, we can control our mind, we can change our mind, we cannot change the whole world. Relation outer dependent arising. It, so how is the conditional relationship outer dependent arising to be seen? as due to the coming together for, right now the general explanation about the outer dependent arising, how is the conditional relation in outer dependent arising to be seen? Due to coming together six elements, six elements, you know, usually what we say, four elements, right? Now Buddha said here, six elements. As due to the coming together of which six elements, namely, please read, 
Condition dependent analysis is to be seen as a joint with a coming together of the elements of the earth, water, fire, wind, space, and session. The season, the season six very important. Four elements plus space and season. That's space and season. Therefore, the weather is changing because of the season. In our life, anything happen, anything happen is depend on the six elements. Six elements, right? Six elements. First four, then space, then season, like season, space. Why space is very important? In order to form something. Let's say, you know, there's a, uh, if the air condition is there. If there's no any space, the air condition cannot make anything cooler. Because there's no space, the air can move around. You're going to grow a you know, flower, you have a seed. In order to plant the seed, what you need? You need space. There's no space how you can plant the seeds. Yes, there's a space, you know, enough space for the seeds to plant, enough space. Above, there's no space. How the you know sprout sprout can grow, cannot. Therefore, space is very important. Then the last is that by the seasons. Season mean you have a seeds, you plant the seeds. There's a space. There's a there are four elements in there. If there's no any like a, you know the weather changes, you cannot grow. Let's say you plant the seed in the winter. But if there's a no season like a spring, then things cannot grow. Therefore, you know, season is very important. Remember six elements, namely, these are six the earth elements. No more detailed explanation. Fire, wind, space, and season. Please read the earth elements functions as a support for the seeds. Then water elements most of the seeds. The fire elements seeds repel the seeds. The wind elements open the seeds. The space element performs the function of not obstructing the seeds. The season corresponds the seeds. Seeds are without their condition as a sport cannot come from the sea. Okay, therefore, so today lesson for you. First remember there's a generally the in a, um, the definition of many of dependent origination. Then there's a two types of dependent origination, you know, outer and inner. Within the outer outer, there's a six elements six elements not just intellectually you understood you need you must have a you need to go through your own experience thing happened with the two things cause and condition only cause cannot happen anything only condition cannot happen anything we need both we need both when, we, when you realize thing happen with the two things, cause and condition, within the, this two, cause is very more important than the condition. But when you realize the cause is the main principal things in our life, then when you get anger, when you get angry, you might think, yes, I'm angry because of my own anger. My previous anger. Then you know my name, my, my colleague or my friend, my family are not just condition. When you have a strong attachment and desire, yes, when you have very strong attachment, not you not easy to achieve what you wish to achieve. But the desire is there. The desire is very strong. The desire is there, but you cannot achieve as you are wishing. Then the end, the desire is so strong. You cannot achieve what you wish to achieve. Then what happened? Again, you feel very upset. Also, you feel, you know, 
and not you know enough capable person. I, I wish to achieve this, I cannot. Then you blame yourself. Many people, you know, feel feel very unhappy themselves. It's okay, you can blame others, still it's still okay. When you blame yourself, oh, I am not enough intelligent. I, I have a no, I don't have ability, look like I'm the you know worst person on the planet. Then almost you know you not going to have any kind of good thing happen in your life. You should not think, you know, I am, you should not blame yourself. We should not blame ourselves. Other also. We should not blame ourselves. We should not blame other. Then whom we should blame? The inner condition, particularly anger, hatred, jealousy, ego, ignorance. We must blame not just blaming them, also we should think those are actually my enemy. Right? My anger is my enemy, not my neighbors. My anger is my enemy, not my relatives. My anger is my enemy, not you know, others. I need to eliminate the anger. How? Through the meditation. We say through the cultivation of compassion. We should not use, okay, we should not say, Meditate on compassion. Compassion is not kind of object you can meditate on. You say, I need to cultivate. I need to cultivate compassion to eliminate anger. And other you can say, I meditate on impermanence. I cultivate compassion. I generate, you know, bodhicitta. We should not say, I meditate on bodhicitta. Because your mind has to transform as a compassion. Your mind has to be, it has to be transformed as a bodhicitta. Bodhicitta is not the object you can meditate on. That time you have, when you say, you know, generate bodhicitta means transform your mind as bodhicitta. Right? Therefore, transforming is very important. Okay, so we have uh, 10 minutes. Is there any Q&A? Yes? Clarify, you said dependent origination isn't interdependency. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Use correct. Uh, dependent origination and interdependency is a different. Because you didn't attend last call, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, they mm -hmm. didn't know whether they. <laughs> yeah. They think about. Yeah. They think you were asking the question. Do you remember interdependent mean like? Big and small. Without small, there's no big. When you say, oh, this car is so big, it's big referred to the small car. Right? Oh, this tree is a huge because compared with other tree, it's dependent. Like the eastern mountain and the western mountain. Without West, this Western mountain, we cannot say Eastern mountain, right? East and West, South and in North, big and small, beauty and ugly. It's just interdependent. Do you remember last time I gave an example? Let's say, you know, last year, for example, uh, let's say this year, you know, Singapore going to uh, select, you know, beauty of Singapore, right? Beauty, so what do you call that? Uh, what do you call the e e Miss, Singapore. Yeah, Miss Singapore? Yeah, or Miss Singapore, Mr. Singapore, <laughs> going to select. Finally, there's a let's say, you know, five uh, person, only five lady or girls there. Everybody think, oh, she will be the, you know, Miss Singapore. Everybody thinks she's the most attractive, most beautiful person. That, this is, is a, no, 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 everybody says, no, no, she's not. Right? Then somehow we thought we, you know, select her, or she pass away. Then who will be the missing about this? Then five one is very ugly compared with those. You, everybody says, I don't think she can be. He's very ugly. He is very ugly, right? Then hope that has gone. Then who will become the, <laughs> the ugly one become the? Miss or Mr. Singapore, right? right? Therefore, 
some is uh, it is kind of little bit not so not nice to say. People, many people think, oh, I'm not really attractive. I'm not really, you know, like look, good looking. I want to be good looking. I want to be attractive, right? They always compare, oh, because of this, because of that. You should not think this way. The beauty and the ugly, attractive or, you know, not attractive, it depends on the timing. Depends on other. Everybody is beautiful. Everybody is attractive. We see such as nice. Therefore, many people, you, you can be, I think most of you know, many people have a serious depression, right? Serious depression. When they look at the mirror, oh, my nose is really good. What do you call this one? The technology? Oh, go to the surgery. My nose becoming a step. Look at it. Look at the mouth. Oh, this is thin, this is a go surgery. Not only men and women, happen like this. They don't have the, you don't understand, dependent origination. <laughs> dependent origination, right? Therefore, yes, dependent origination and interdependent is very different. Yes and less, big and small, right? Yeah. Any question? Yes? <clears throat> how do you say everything, the result depends on the cause and condition? So how do we know like what is the cause and the condition? For example, if I want like, I want to be healthy, how do I know what is the cause and the condition? Healthy. Yeah. Very good question. Generally, okay. Generally, there's no such as we say this is healthy food, this is healthy drink. Right? It depends on very individual actually. Food and drink is healthy or it is very individual. For example, when you go to Bhutan. Bhutan is and you know, other parts of India next to Bhutan we call Arunachal. Those people cannot eat without cannot eat any food without hot chili. They really need hot chili. Without chili, if they eat the food, they think it's a, they feel they become very unhealthy. When you go to Tibet, Tibetan eat a lot of butter. Then a lot of you know like a fat, the meat fat. Or fat or fat? Fat, fat? fat meat. If Singapore eat, you know, like fat meat, a lot of butter tea, you can survive a few years. <laughs> There's no such a healthy food, healthy drink, right? Healthy drink. Also, it's a very common mistake we have. When we see doctor, doctor says, oh. You have a, this problem, you should not eat, you, you, you must stop eating this. We stop immediately, we have a more problem. Right? Therefore, healthy or unhealthy is a very individual things, individual thing. What we should eat, what we should not you, you need to analyze. You drink few day, you need to feel it's, it's better or it will be a problem. Right? This is shown, there's not a, such as you can say healthy and unhealthy, but if your money is very healthy, your money is very healthy, your money is very stable, your life can be very stable, your life can be very healthy. Healthy mind can make healthy body. Healthy body, not granted, can make healthy mind. Right? There's no such as you can say healthy food, healthy drink. Also, you know, we are 21st century. Many companies, there's a you know, hundred or thousand companies produce a lot of uh, supplementary, right? Supplementary. Oh, all kinds of, when you go to Mustafa Center, huh? a whole like a part is uh, all the supplementary. When you look at the uh, prescription, look like if you eat this one, look like you, you can be live for forever. <laughs> look like, not true. But what we do, we believe, we pay a lot of money, we buy, we use it, eat, not true. Therefore, what I'm saying, a simple way, for my personal view, there is no such a big as a healthy and unhealthy. It's very individual. Also, doctors say, oh, you eat this one very good for you. It's not true. You need to go to your own experience. Am I right? Experience. But that is true. Your money is very healthy. Your body can be very healthy. 
healthy mind can make healthy body. Healthy body cannot make healthy mind. Right? This is uh, what I believe. Yes. Any question? Can I just also clarify? Yes. You said the example when you're sleeping, then somebody wakes you up and you get angry. Yeah. The cause is not the person who wakes you up. Yes. The cause is your previous moment of anger. But then when I'm sleeping, I'm not really angry. So what is this? Oh, yeah. And, and then if the person never wake me up, right? I won't be angry, ma. Mm -hmm. If the person never wake me up, I won't be angry. Yeah. So what what is the cause that you said is the previous cause of anger? Can you um explain the little bit? Yeah. You are sleeping, you know, very happily, peacefully. Somebody wake up, surely you get angry. If somebody won't wake up you, the anger is there. The, the, the anger is always there. But we call what we call lead Roman, right? Lead Roman. It's called lead Roman. But the anger is there. But the anger still have other condition to able to exist continuously. What call we call a wind, wind, wind. Because all consciousness always depend on the wind. When the anger arises or in the anger you know wake up, we need condition. Is it for this question? Mm -hmm. Right. Generally, again, let's say, you know, we say, oh, if you do this thing, you won't get any result. Many people say that. You don't do that. If you do this, you won't get any result. You know, not true. Commonly, we say, if you do this, you won't get the result which you wish to have. Generally, all condition, any condition, phenomena, always produce result. Produce result. Produce result. All condition always every moment producing result. But we saying we cannot have the result which is we wish to have. Wish to have. Right? Therefore, there's a no there's no any single condition phenomena cannot produce any result. There's nothing. Right? For example, when you make a fire. You, you you burn the paper, the paper destroyed. But the fire make a result, what? The ashes. It's the result. That means you can see transform, we say, you know, uh, destroy me such as transformation. Things changing here, they're transforming here, there. Yeah. Last time I said in the, in the TBC class, it's very interesting to think about how things changing Things are transforming each other. Let's say, what is this? A book, this paper. This paper can be transformed into bone. Bone? No, 100% sure. No. Let, let's say, I cut this book into many pieces, can be transformed into soil. Soil that can be transformed, the book can be transformed into soil. Then I use the soil, then I grow like a fruits. You can see the book transformed into soil. Within the soil, certain substance transformed into fruits. When we eat the fruits, many parts of the fruit going to transform into, into bone, blood. Flesh. Right? But it takes time to process, you know, the, this paper transform to bone, but gradually will transform. Everything actually, you know, the external, the outer phenomena, you can just you reflect on anything. It starts from the very simple things. Everything starts from the very simple. Like our body. First on this, you know, huge body, the ugly body. Think about when it in is it was in the mother womb. Just kind of particle. It's very small particle. It's small. Then gradually the small particle develop big, 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 not huge. When we this body is going to burn uh, do the cremation. What happened? Everything 
transformed into particles. Then the you know ashes you collect together or the ashes blown together you throw in the sea. Then it transforms into different particles. One day it coming back as a flower or fruits, anything happened. That means things start from the particle at the end, transform into particle. So what things is look very big because of the, the six elements. In the water elements disappear, things become very many pieces. Right? Six elements. So okay, so we just stop our class here. Thank you so much for editing the class. Uh, I hope you, you are doing you know homework. Not homework, I hope you are applying the definition of the power of the truth and dependent origination or interdependent. At the end, you should, you know, as usual, we do dedication. So as a Buddhist tradition, as a Buddha teaching, we believe when you act positively for one moment, we can accumulate positive action. When you act like 10, 20, 40 minutes positively, we believe accumulating positive merits. When we accumulate the merit, it's very small amount, very small amount. But when we dedicate the merits, it's small amount. But when we dedicate, look like you know, cup of water, you you throw you do you throw in the ocean, ocean. A cup of water can remain until the ocean fully dies, dry. And therefore, when you dedicate, you might think. This morning, I accumulated, you know, very small amount of merit. This merit, I am going to dedicate, you know, to achieving Buddhahood, to benefit as all other Buddhas and Bodhisattva. That means, small amount of merit, you are mixing with the merit of Buddha and Bodhisattva. It's become more, you know, greater, more bigger. So dedication is very important. Therefore, in all the merit we accumulated this morning, first, you know, we dedicate ourselves to able to realize the pure dharma, to able to practice dharma for achieving Buddhahood to benefit all sentient beings. Practice the dharma. Can do all the daily posts, generate a Buddhichita, then become a Buddha. When we become Buddha, we can benefit all kinds of sentient beings. Second, the merit we accumulated this morning, we are going to dedicate for world peace. Peace, you know, with the all countries. Last, we did get the merit to live long like all the religious gurus, particularly most of us receive teaching from Vishnu Dalai Lama. We did get the merit to live long like all the religious gurus, particularly Vishnu Dalai Lama. Okay, thank you. Have a happy Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Let's see.